Hello everyone, my name is Juliana Armelini from the German Aerospace Center and together with my colleague Laura Pica, we would like to present you a simulation of a demand responsive transport feeder system, a case study of Transwick. Let's start with the motivation. The increasing motorization and migration from rural areas to the cities have caused a centralization of the social infrastructure and service offers in the cities, causing the collapse of supply structures in rural and peri-urban areas. This problem is also reflected in the public transport, which, if provided at all, is characterized by long travel times, low frequencies, and an irregular service, making the private car often the only option for mobility in these areas. This situation is not new. Over the last decades, different demand-based modes of public transport have been tested, but mostly without success. The main problems are the higher cost of these flexible offers because of bigger fleets with smaller vehicles, and secondly, that most of the time the trips were limited to the transport of only one passenger. Technological advances and improvements in digitalization in recent times have allowed to improve these demand-based mobility forms significantly. Demand responsive transport, or also called DRT, are an example of this. DRT offers a shared service without fixed routes and without fixed stops. As we can see in the videos, in contrary to ride-hailing services, for example Uber, DRTs try to combine different requests in one trip to minimize the number of vehicles and route length without compromising passenger travel times. According to some investigations, lower vehicle mileage and a decrease in traffic can only be achieved if customers switch from private cars to these systems and if different travel requests can be combined in a trip. Then, DRT services could be an option to improve the public transport in peri-urban areas. The problem is that the connection between these areas and the next city is mostly high demanded and DRT services are not well suited for high demand connections. For these trips, conventional high capacity public transport, such as trains, subways or bus rapid transit, are the best options. So the combination of high capacity and public transport and DRT could be the best solution. The objective of this work is then to analyze the optimization potential of public transport in peri-urban areas using DRT as feeder systems for a bus rapid transit line. For this analysis, a peri-urban area of the German city of Brunswick was selected as a study case. This area covers six villages located along the Federal Highway B1. All villages show characteristics of peri-urban and rural areas such as a low population density, a high percentage of commuters to the city, and limited local supply. Thanks to the fast access to the city through the Federal Highway and the limited public transport offer, the main mode of transport is the private car. The public transport offer in the area consists of two bus lines, which are shown in purple and green on the map. Both lines show long travel times, a low frequency of half an hour, and a high number of bus stops. The village of Valle doesn't count with a public transport connection with Brunswick at all. As we can see on the map, the area has a lot of free space and it's really near to the city. So the potential of growth and expansion of the area is really high. But if the public transport offer is not improved, this will be only followed 
by more traffic and its negative side effects, such as traffic, congestion, noise, and air pollution. To avoid this, we propose to replace the current public transport system by a bus rapid transit line with dirty as feeder. The bus rapid transit allows a direct and fast connection between the villages and the city center with a high frequency of 15 minutes. As we can see on the map, the route starts in Fegele and runs along the Federal Highway, stopping only three times until the urban area. In the city area, the implementation of a BRT corridor with dedicated lanes is proposed. For the first or last mile, this will be from the respective home to the BRT line, two different options are given. The use of non-motorized modes like bikes and scooters is the first option. For this, an appropriate cycling infrastructure must be regarded. For people that can't or don't like to cycle, a demand responsive transport with a door-to-door -door service is provided. Based on the characteristics of the area, three independent DRT systems are proposed. We can see the service area of the DRT Fegele in pink, in green the service area of the DRT Denstorf, and the service area of the DRT Lame in blue. Each DRT service, uh, system sorry, serves only the respected uh, DRT stop. For the DRT Denstorf and Lame, a fleet of two vehicles were implemented, and for Fegele, three vehicles were chosen. All vehicles have a capacity of six passengers. As we said before, the PRT line has only three stops between Fegele and the city area. These stops are designed as mobility hubs. They provide a simple and smooth transition between the different mobility services and offer other amenities for example, ATM, kiosk, parcel lockers, etc. To be able to compare the current and proposed public transport systems, trips between the villages and the city center over a day were simulated in Sumo. The scenario zero simulates the current public transport service and the scenario one, the proposed one. For the simulation of the DRT services, a Python tool was developed. This tool takes an, as input the SUMO network and information about the vehicle fleet and requests. Based on this data, a dispatcher searches for the routes with lower travel times that can accommodate the larger number of requests. In our work, we assumed that all requests are known in advance, so the dispatcher is working offline or in a static mode. The travel times are calculated using the SUMO tool Dua Router. As output, the routes for each person and DRT vehicle are given in SUMO format. The video shows an example of the simulation of DRTs. We can see how person, persons in blue make a travel request. They are then picked up by a DRT vehicle in yellow and are transported to their respective mobility hub. There, they wait until the next BRT bus to continue their trip to the city center. The same applies for trips from the city center to the villages. Let's move on to the results. Let's start with the results of the DRTs. On the graph, we can see the number of vehicles for each trip. In this context, a trip is the one that starts in the mobility hub, goes to pick up or drop off passengers, and returns to the mobility hub in less than 15 minutes for the next rapid transit bus. As we can see, the entire fleet was used less than half of the time. For the DRT Denstorf, the two vehicles were only needed for 23% of the trips. 
This is because of the lower number of requests for the system. The use of only one vehicle would not be possible because the ability to combine trips, which is also called shareability, will drop significantly. On the second graph, we can see the number of passengers per trip and vehicle. The DRTs Lame and Fegelde show good results with more than four requests combined for 80% of the trips. For the DRT Lame, until nine passengers could be transported in one trip. The DRT Denstorf shows again worse results. The vehicle A took four or less passengers for 70% of the trips. So the systems can still be improved. One option could be to group the orders in 30 minutes interval instead of 15. But this will of course imply a lower service quality for the user. The other option will be to evaluate the DRTs operating under different service areas. For example, a unique DRT system operating in the entire air study area and serving all three mobility hubs could be analyzed. The simulations showed the efficiency of the proposed BRT compared to the current bus line. The travel time was reduced by 52% from 40 to 21 minutes. This is mainly due to the lower stop density and the avoidance of congestion due to the BRT corridor in the urban area. Even lower travel times could be achieved by implementing transit signal priority. Thanks to this decrease in the travel time, the frequency of 15 minutes was possible with the addition of only one more vehicle to the fleet. The buses now transit through wider and faster streets which allows the use of articulated buses. This, in combination with the travel times and frequency, allowed a three times larger capacity of 620 passengers per hour and direction. Finally, thanks to the incorporation of the villages of Lamy and Valle, the service area was increased by 67%. Finally, the travel times between the respective home and the city center with the different transport modes were evaluated. In the graph, we can see the average travel times for each area and mode. The travel times in the graph don't show the waiting times at the stops or the searching time for a parking spot in case of trips with the private car. In comparison to the current public transport, the travel times with the proposed public transport system were reduced by 33 to 45%. In the proposed system, the travel times for the first or last mile with the DRT system or by bike showed similar results with values between four and five minutes. For the mode DRT plus BRT, the waiting times at the mobility hub were able to simulate it and lie around four minutes on average. In the simulations, all persons were able to transfer from the DRT to the desired fast rapid transit bus. As we can see on the graph, the walking times to current bus stops and the cycling times to the proposed mobility hubs are similar. But although the times are similar, the transit area of influence of the stops was increased. The highest walking time simulated for the current system was 800 meters. This value is greater than the commonly adopted value of 400 meters as an acceptable walking distance. For the proposed system, the higher cycling time to the mobility hub was 2.4 kilometers. Most bike and ride users are willing to travel between 2.5 and 5 kilometers. However, 
it's important to emphasize that this willingness is strongly associated with cycling facilities and safety, which underlines the importance of investment in cycling infrastructure. Finally, we can see that the detour factor, this is the relation between the travel time with public transport and the private, the private car, went from 2.5 to 1.4. The difference between the proposed public transport and the private car is only six minutes in the worst case. We can conclude that the implementation of DRT as feeder systems of high capacity public transport, in this case of a BRT, can help to address the mobility problems in peri-urban areas. The higher cost of the proposed transport system due to the bigger fleet and the increased mileage could be counteracted by a potential increase in ridership. This is not only given because of the larger service area, but also by a better quality of service due to the faster and more comfortable connections. The construction of a BRT corridor in the urban area provides a fast route without time losses due to traffic and it can be used for other bus lines as well. The proposed system is not intended to operate alone but to be a part of an extensive BRT network with DRT feeders for the city of Brunswick. As it was said before, the analysis of the DRTs operating under different service areas and fleets is important for further optimization. Finally, to assess the economic viability of the system, a cost-benefit analysis should be done. Therefore, a detailed modeling of the demand and a mode choice model should be developed. Thank you for your attention. I'm looking forward to your questions and remarks.